Okay, we have an important lesson today, inshallah ta'ala, to cover. I'm going to explain I'm first, and then I'll read from the text of the author, inshallah. All right, so you know that there's something called Fi'lun Malbin, past tense verb. All right. Fi'lun Malbin, that's past tense verb. And you know that there's something called, you should know, Fi'lun Mudarir. All right. Al Fi'lul Malbi is the past tense verb. So it's the verb that refers to something that happened in the past, an action that took place in the past. The Fi'lul Mudarir is for the present or future tense. You know that there's something called Thulathi. Fi'lun Thulathi. I'll just write it real quick, but I'm going to erase it because I need this space. Fi'lun Thulathi. Okay. Fi'rthulathi means it's a verb that has three root letters, right? Mujarrad means bare or devoid, meaning devoid of any extra letters. So let's start all the way from the basics. And look at the verb that has three root letters and no additional letters. So it's only going to have three letters in its Maldi form, in the past tense form. Fi'lun thulathi mujarrad. Now, a Maldi verb would also have a mudarir verb. A past tense needs a present and a future tense too, right? Okay. Most of the time. You know that this fi'lun thulathiyun mujarrad, a triliteral verb that is devoid of extra letters, could have the wazin, the pattern of fa'ala, like akala, dakhala, or the pattern of fa'ila, with a kasra on the ayn, like Sami'a or Alima or Fahima, and it could have the pattern of Fa'ula, the Dhamma on the Ain, such as Hasuna and Karuma. If you've been attending the lessons regularly, then you know that. These Arabic words have awzan patterns. So that is a good portion of a lesson just to explain. So we won't explain it now. We've explained it already more than once. That's why you have to be consistent in these lessons. This is a, a language. So you can't be missing two, three lessons in a row. And it's new information at that. It's a language and it's new information. So if you're not consistent and you don't review and study, it's likely that you'll get lost quickly. So the mudarir also could have a fatha on the ayn. Yaf'alu. Or a kasra on the ayn. Yaf'ilu. Or a dhamma on the ayn. Yaf'ulu. So, how would the mudarir be for a maldi past tense verb that is thulafi mujarrad, a triliteral verb, three-lettered verb that is devoid of any extra letters? Let's start with the first one. If the verb was fa'ala, meaning if it had the pattern of fa'ala, it's mudariya, it could be yaf'alu. I'll give you examples, inshallah. Or it's mudariya, it could be yaf'ilu. Or it's mudariya, it could be yaf'ulu. If the maldi was fa'ila with a kasrah on the ayn, 
its mudari' could be yaf'alu with a fatha on the ayn or yaf'ilu with a kasra on the ayn but it would be yaf'ulu if a maldi was fa'ila its mudari' would not be yaf'ulu with a dhamma on the ayn if the maldi had a kasra on the ayn the mudari' would not have a dhamma on the ayn and if the maldi was of the pattern of fa'ula its mudari' would be yaf'ulu and that's it what you see here brothers and sisters is six combinations but let me ask you what's the total number of possible combinations nine three times three is nine no however there's only six that's because this is what was heard from the arabs So it was not heard from the Arabs that they would say fa'ila yaf'ulu or fa'ula yaf'alu. So let's take some examples. Let's see. Number one, fa'ala yaf'alu. Like zahaba yazhabu. To go. Zahaba, he went. Yazhabu, he goes or he will go. See how it fits the pattern? فَعَلَى يَفْعَلُوا ذَهَبَ يَذْهَبُوا سَأَلَ يَسْأَلُوا مَنَعَ يَمْنَعُوا Let's check out number two. فَعَلَى يَفْعِلُوا Like ضَرَبَ يَضْرِبُوا ضَرَبَ يَضْرِبُوا فَعَلَى يَفْعِلُوا ضَرَبَ He hit In the past. يَضْرِبُوا He hits or he will hit. Let's look at the third one. Fa'ala yaf'ulu. Like, da'khala yadkhulu. Let's check out number four. Fa'ila yaf'alu. Like, sami'a yasma'u. Sami'a yasma'u. Fa'ila yaf'alu. Alima ya'lamu. Let's check out number five. Fa'ila yaf'ilu. Both of them with a kasra on the ayn. Like, hasiba yahsibu. And let's check out number six. Fa'ula yaf'ilu. Like, hasuna yahsunu. Qabuha yaqbuhu. Karuma yakrumu. So do you see how that works there, brothers and sisters? How the maldi goes with the mudarir? What is the meaning of hasiba? Hasiba means to consider. To think. To suppose. Any question here, brothers and sisters? Now, okay, you might want to know why is number one dotted and why is number five dotted. But we're going to come to that, inshallah. Any other question? All right. Now let's read from the text, insha'Allah ta'ala. Uh, this Arabic text and this English translation are both drafts. It's loaded with typos. So, mashallah, uh, make dua for who took the time to get this draft together. Like anything... You need to uh, edit things, but this was effort. So, barakallahu fikum for, you know, make dua for who helped in this issue. So, the author said, As for the triliteral verb that's devoid of any additives, so triliteral means it has three root letters. It has three root letters does not mean that it doesn't have more than three letters. The word itself could have more than three letters, but thulafi means it has three root letters. Mujarrad means bare, devoid of any extra letters. So we want to start here. Kala fa in kana ala wazni fa'ala 
مفتوح العين فمضارعه يفعل أو يفعل بضم العين أو كسرها نحو نصر ينصر وضرب يضرب Sorry that that's not put in order properly. MashaAllah. He said, if its past tense form was fa'ala, if it had the pattern of fa'ala with a fatha on the middle root letter, which is called the ayn of the word, the middle root letter of a word is its ayn. So the fa of the word is the first root letter. The ayn of the word is the second root letter. And the lamb of the word is the first root letter. So it says here, if its past tense form was upon the pattern of fa'ala with a fatha on the middle root letter, that is, with a fatha on the ayn, then its mudari' form would be yaf'ulu or yaf'ilu with a dhamma or a kasra on the ayn of the word, the middle root letter. Such as nasara yansuru and daraba yadribu. Now let's answer the question. Why is number one dotted here? Fa'ala yaf'alu. He just said he just said, if the maudi is fa'ala with the fatha on the ayn, then it's mudari or it could be yaf'ilu, <coughs> excuse me, or yaf'ulu. He didn't say anything about yaf'alu, although we did. And when we said fa'ala yaf'alu, we dotted the line there or dashed it. It's a dashed line, not a dotted line. So when would the mudari' of fa'ala be yaf'alu with a fatha on the ayn? That's what he's going to tell us now. He said, rahimahullah, at number nine, وَيَجِيءُ عَلَى يَفْعَلُ مَفْتُوحَ الْعَيْنِ إِذَا كَانَ عَيْنُ فِعْلِهِ أَوْلَامُهُ Harfan min huruf al-halq. He said its mudari' form could come with the pattern of yaf'alu. So its mudari' form means the maudi, which is fa'ala, with the fatha on the ayn. This one, its mudari' form could come with the pattern of yaf'alu, with a fatha on the middle root letter, which is the ayn of the word, ayn al-kalima. If its middle or last root letter is a throat letter. If its middle or last root letter is a throat letter. He says, وَهِيَ الْهَمْزَةُ وَالْهَاءُ وَالْعَيْنُ وَالْحَاءُ وَالْغَيْنُ وَالْخَاءُ There are six of them, six throat letters. The Hamza, the Ha, the Ayn, the Ghayn, the Ha, and the Kha. Then he gives you examples. Nahu sa'ala yas'alu wa mana'a yamna'u wa aba ya'ba That should be number 13, number 12 actually. Wa aba ya'ba That needs its own line. But anyway, he says, examples are sa'ala yas'alu and as for Aba Ya'ba, it is irregular. We'll come back to that, inshallah. This is not difficult to understand, inshallah ta'ala. He's saying that a maudi could be fa'ala with the fatha on the ayn. Could have the wazin, the pattern of fa'ala with the fatha on the ayn. And its mudari' would be yaf'alu with the fatha also on the ayn. If the middle root letter or the last root letter of this verb come from the throat. So check it out. Let's look at the examples he gave. He said, like, Sa'ala, yes, Elu. 
and mana'ah yamna'u. Notice here that sa'ala yas'alu has a fatha on the middle root letter in the maldi and the mudari. Same thing here. Mana'ah yamna'u has a fatha on the ayin in the maldi and the mudari. And if you notice, the middle root letter is from the throat. Ah, yes, elu. Sa ala, yes, elu. Or the last root letter is from the throat. Mana a yam naru. Take another example. One that you took already today. The haba. There's your throat letter, which is the middle root, le root letter. And it's mudariya is yadhabu. Because ha is from the throat. So that's what came in the speech of the Arabs. If the maldi and the mudariya both have a fatha on the ayn, on the middle root letter, then the middle or last root letter of that verb comes from the throat. Did you understand that? Now, don't misunderstand this rule. Because we didn't say, we did not say, if a triliteral verb, if its middle or last root letters are from the throat, then its maldi and its mudariya both have a fatha on the ayn, the middle root letter. You need to get used to this terminology. It's easier than me translating. I don't really like to keep saying middle root letter. I want to say the ayn, the ayn of the word. You need to understand that that means the middle root letter. So in the case of sa'ala, the ayn is the hamza. In the case of mana, the ayn is the noon. Right? Are you all following me? In the case of dhahaba, the ayn is the ha. The ayn of the word. What we said was, if the maudi and the mudariya both have fathas on the ayn, then the ayn of the word or the lamb of the word come from the throat. So there's a difference between those two. Just like we say, every messenger is a prophet, but not every prophet is a messenger. Every messenger is a prophet, but not every prophet is a messenger. Because, brothers and sisters, so you don't mix this up, there are verbs that have the ayn or the lamb from the throat and they don't follow the pattern of sa'ala yas'alu. For example, raja'a yarji'u. The ayn is from the throat, isn't it? Yes, it is. And that is the lamb of the word, the last root letter. Yes, it is. So how come it's not raja'a yarji'u? Also, how about this one? Dakhala yadkhulu. The kha is from the throat and it's the ayn of the word. So how come it's not dakhala yadkhalu with a fatha on the maldi and the mudariya? I know y'all are happy that you're understanding this stuff, right? Inshallah ta'ala. May Allah may Allah give us all an accepted dua. Amen. The answer is because it's not the rule to say that if the ayn or the lamb is from the throat, then the maldi and the mudariya both have a fatha. The rule is if the maldi and the mudariya both have a fatha, then the ayn or the lamb came from the throat. All right. So is that clear? MashaAllah. All right, so I don't see any objections or anything or anyone posting any questions. So then the author said, Wa Aba Yatba Shav. He said, but Aba Yatba is irregular. Aba Yatba. All right. Firstly, I want to remind you that is the habit of the scholars that when they would mention a verb, they would mention its maldi and its mudariya together. So that's what we're going to do all the time, inshallah ta'ala, when we learn Arabic. You'll hear the maldi and the mudariya. 
usually, for sure, if I mention the Maldi, I'll probably follow it up with the Mudariya. And inshallah, if I mention the Mudariya, I'll also mention the Maldi. Because there's another question, which is, okay, you just learned that if the Maldi is fa'ala, the Mudariya could be yaf'alu or yaf'ilu or yaf'ulu. So the question is, how, how do you know which one is that? The answer is, you can only know by hearing. You need to hear that verb. So if you heard a verb, if you heard a maudi that was upon the wazin of fa'ala, and you didn't hear its mudariyah, then at the least you know that its mudariyah could have any of the three harakas on the ayn, yaf'alu, yaf'ilu, yaf'ulu, but you don't know which one until you hear it. If you heard a verb, a maldi was fa'ila with a kasra on the ayn, then at least you know that its mudariyah is not yaf'ulu, its mudariyah could be yaf'alu or yaf'ilu, and I'll tell you from now, it's most likely yaf'alu with the fatha. That's why we dash the line for yaf'ilu. So if you heard fa'ila, most likely the mudariyah is yaf'alu. So somebody said fahima. You say, oh, fahima yaf'amu. And if you heard the maudi was fa'ula, then you already know that the mudariyah is yaf'ulu, so you don't even have to hear it. Because it wouldn't be any other way. We mentioned the verbs, we'll mention the maldi and the mudariyah, so you can hear them both together and know how the harakas go. That's for the thulathi mujarrad. Thulathi mujarrad, a triliteral verb with no extra letters. It's important to mention the maldi and the mudariyah together for the one who's learning. Whatever is more than three letters, whenever the maldi is more than three letters, there's a consistent rule. So you don't have to hear the mudariya. All you have to do is know the rule. Which we'll come to that, inshallah. So the author said, So what did he do? He gave the maldi and the mudariya. He said, Abba, this verb, Abba. Yaba, which means to refuse. Aba Yaba. It is anomalous. It is irregular. Shaz. Why? Because we found it upon the pattern of Fa'ala Yaf'alu. Look here. Aba, the origin of Aba is Aba Ya. Fa'ala. But then this. Uh, yeah, turned into an alif. Also here, the origin of yaba is yaba you. But this ya at the end here, for a reason that you'll come to know, inshallah, it transformed into an alif, which is what you see up here. That's an alif maksura at the end of the verb, right? That's an alif that's shaped like a ya. And I drew a little dagger alif in there just to remind you. Most of the time, you're not going to find that little dagger alif in there to remind you that that's an alif. If it's outside of a mushaf. So the verb was abaya with the wazan of fa'ala. But then that last ya transformed into an alif. It flipped into an alif. You learned about huruf illa, that they change into each other, right? So Abaya became Aba. And we still say that it has the pattern of Fa'ala. The pattern of Aba is Fa'ala. And the Mudariyah of Abaya was Ya'bayu. Ya'bayu, which is the wazin of what? Yaf'alu, with the Fatha on the Ayn. Then that Ya transformed into an Alif, so Ya'bayu became Ya'ba. So we say it as, the Arabs said it as, Abba Ya'ba. That's the Maldi and the Mudariyah. And the wazin of Abba Ya'ba is Fa'ala Yaf'alu. Based on how it was in origin. 
However, why is this verb aba yaba upon the wazan of fa'ala yaf'alu? And neither its ayn or its lamb is from the throat. The middle root letter is a ba. That's not from the throat. And the last root letter in origin is a ya, yeah, and that's not from the throat. So how did it come to be aba ya'ba? The answer is, this is irregular. It's an irregularity in the language. We asked uh, one of the sheikhs who was teaching us in Arabic, why does Arabic language have irregularities? He said, every language has irregularities. It is not unique to the Arabic language. So the irregularity is called shuduv. And that's exactly what it means. Irregular, an irregularity or an anomaly. However, Arabic language, Arabic language is not abundant with irregularities. It does have irregularities, but it's not abundant. English language has much, 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 much more irregularities than Arabic, meaning inconsistency in rules. MashaAllah. The meaning of the word Aba Ya'ba is to refuse. And if a person is excessively an excessive ref refuser, he's obstinate, he's stubborn. He's called Abi. He's an abi with a shadda on the ya. He's obstinate. All right. Bismillah. The author said, may Allah have mercy on him. وَإِن كَانَ مَعْضِيهِ عَلَى فَاعِلَ مَكْثُورَ الْعَيْنِ فَمُضَارِعُهُ يَفْعَلُ بِفَتْحِ الْعَيْنِ نَحْوُ عَلِمَ يَعْلَمُ If it's past tense form without an apostrophe was fa'ila with a kasra on the middle root letter then it's mudari' comes as yaf'alu with a fatha on the middle root letter such as alima ya'lamu that's a typo there because that's an alif, not a lamb. It's supposed to be a lamb. Alima ya alamu. So, so if the wazan of the verb is fa'ila, then the mudari will be yaf'alu. Most of the time, it's it's very reliable rule because there's less than twenty verbs that go otherwise. Fa'ila yaf'alu. So alima is the example he gave. Ya'lamu. Uh, Fahima Yafhamu Samia What? Yasma'u Tariba What? Yatrabu Laiba What? Yalabu You got it? إِلَّا مَا شَذَّ مِن نَحْوِ حَثِبَ يَحْسِبُ وَأَخَوَاتِهِ Except for what is irregular, such as حَثِبَ يَحْسِبُ and its sisters. What that means is that there's a, a small group of verbs in the Arabic language, very small group, less than 20 verbs, in which the pattern is فَاعِلَ يَفْعِلُ And it's also validly said, Hasiba Yahsabu, which is an important lesson for you. The Arabs have dialects. 
different tribes spoke in different ways. They do not all comply in their harakas. Sometimes they even vary in their letters. Sometimes one tribe might say a word with a sod and the other says it with a seen, or one would say it with a ta and the other says it with a baud or something like that. And sometimes they say it with all the same letters, but they vary with their harakas. And some Arabs even spoke with blending dialects. They would take the dialect of one tribe and, and mix it with their own or mix two tribes when they speak. So you can say Hasiba Yahsibu and you can say, and that's irregular, Hasiba Yahsabu and that's regular. That's consistent with the rule. But when we say it's irregular, that doesn't mean it's weak Arabic. When we say it's irregular, we're just saying that it's not going with the rule, the consistent usual rule. But that doesn't mean that as Arabic that it's weak or not eloquent. That hasiba yahsibu is correct Arabic. So that's why, let's go back up to uh, here. Number five is a dashed line. Number five is a dashed line because fa'ila yaf'ilu is irregular. Then the author said, wa in kana ma'dihi ala wazni fa'ula madhmum al-'ayn fa mudari'uhu yaf'ulu bi dhamm al-'ayn nahwu hasuna yahsunu wa karuma yakrumu. If its past tense form without an apostrophe was fa'ula with a dhamma on the middle root letter, its muldaria, also without an apostrophe, is yaf'ulu with a dhamma on the middle root letter. So there's a dhamma on the ayn in both cases, such as hasuna yahsunu and karuma yakrumu. And that's our last case. For today. So fa'ula is consistent, is reliable, and it's mudariya, it doesn't require any thinking once you know the rule, yaf'ulu. The only thinking you might have to do is just putting the letters together and putting the harakas and like actually just making the word come out of your mouth. That might be the most work you have to do, but the rule is easy. If the maudi was fa'ula, the mudariya is yaf'ulu. But also, that's why you need to speak the Arabic as much as you can, even if you're not in an Arabic-speaking environment. Because the more you speak it, the more, the easier it will be to come off of your tongue, the faster you can conjugate things in your mind. So if you let yourself stay rusty, it's going to take you a moment to go from a maldi to a mudariyah. Your ability to go from a maldi to a mudariyah should be instantaneous. Okay, I'm talking about your being able to say it out of your mouth. If I ask you, what's the maldi of Farula, you should say Yafarulu, just that simply and easy. I might ask someone, what's the maldi, what's the mudari of Farula, and he might say, it's yeah, um, yeah, he knows the rule, but he just can't get the word out of his mouth. It's yeah, 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 fu, you, uh, so that's what you don't want to be like, mashallah. Like hasuna yahsunu, karuma yakrumu, kabuha yakbuhu, etc., etc. And we'll stop there for today, inshallah ta'ala. That's a short lesson. But, subhanallah, it's okay. If you have any questions I can answer for you, I'll be glad to.